guys, they're all just here. Welcome down to Manston Golf Centre. It's a hardy day today. Uh, I am here with Lloyd. Welcome. Yeah. It is episode four of Captain Caveman's Golf Evolution. If you haven't seen episodes one, two, and three, the question is why? Um, and then go and have a look, check them out there. They are on my channel. If you haven't subscribed to it, click the subscribe button and subscribe to it now. Uh, you will, if you haven't subscribed to Captain Kane and Golf Evolution YouTube channel, you will have missed some behind the scenes and extra footage which Lloyd is put on there. Now, so we've had three caveman challenges. We've had three episodes. Oh, three no down, yeah. Three no down. We've well, we got the close ones and a playoff on one. Um, now, we've gone through a basic motion. We've gone today into driver. We were looking at going into fairway woods, but we decided to have a little bit of a change. We changed and we did basic comfort play. We just seen a huge change. Huge change in approach and consistency of not just getting the ball out, but getting out with a bit more control and purpose. Um, and now we're going a little bit closer to the green. We're doing a little bit of shifting stroke pitching. We can do that here because we've got different targets. We've got a close one in, we've got one a little bit further away, so we can do a bit more pitch as well. Um, so we're going to have a look at the basic motion, what is happening at the minute. Um, we're going to hit maybe four shots. So from this distance, boy, what would you normally play? What shot would you play? A putter. Okay. Interesting, a lot of you guys out there watching will probably look the same thing. You know, when we look at it from down a target line view, we are maybe two and a bit steps away from the edge of the green, and then we've got maybe eight steps to the flag. Yeah. So we're not a million miles away from it. Um, the ground on the approach to the green is pretty good, you know? You could definitely put through it, but we're going to change that because we want to be able to control the whether it be a short chip, whether it be a, a, a pitch shot, we want to be able to control what's happening. Um, we have put in place, if you've seen episode one, um, a, a little bit of a movement which we're going to now sort of magnify a little bit more, for the end of the better way. We're going to look at it in greater detail and we're going to see how much of that movement we can make in small, slow motions and keep the speed then similar, but let like the club's length of the move become how we can do it. Okay, so let's hit some shots of this one first. So we've got sand wedge to start with. We're also going to have a look at it with the gap wedge as well. So we're just going to hit our first few shots just into this angle here. Yeah, it's one of the big reasons why we pump. So, so what we've seen there is a slight inconsistency in the movement. So when we look at the movement itself and we break it down and we you know we've we say we've just looked at it in that sort of slow motion, we're drawing lines on it, we're seeing where we are. The one thing that we really need to look at is again okay, a little bit of the, the health of the feeling that the behindness of it, the body's going this way. We want to be feeling you know, the pressure staying forward, a little bit of hip rotation. And because we're really close into it, the hip rotation isn't as vital as the forearms continuing their motion. So you know, if we had a the ball here and if I was to just make if I was to lean forward a little bit and just get the forearm to throw it out onto the green, you've got a feel of what we want from the forearm movement. So if we say okay, well let's get a few more balls over and let's just for a second, let's just get a shot where we keep that movement happening for the forward, just imagining that we're throwing this ball underarm onto the green. So we don't want the club to travel a big distance because it's just going to go too far, isn't it? So we've got to think, well, if I'm going to throw it onto the green, how far is the movement going to be for it to land and then roll to the overall target of goal? So if we looked at it and said, well, if we could fly the ball maybe a third to a halfway and let it roll the rest of the way, then we only need a golf swing 
to move the golf ball five yards. So, okay, we need to make control the length of the movement as we go through. So, because we've not got a great deal of, of body rotation and we want to keep the angle of attack a fraction more downward so we don't bottom out on the ground back here, pressure goes forward. So we've got that narrowing of the stance, the ball is more central, we want our pressure forward, keeping the hands forward and then still keeping the body there and moving the arms gently back, gently through and just pushing forward. Yeah. So if we've got that feeling of movement, really, really slow, but really small motion, yeah. then we're going to get much more consistent out. Now, the loft on the club, I mean, I've got slightly less loft than what Lloyd's got there, so my ball flight was a little bit lower, right? and a little bit more, more loft is going to have a slightly higher ball flight, and it's going to have less rollout. So we will adjust that as we go through. Right, so Lloyd, take your setup. Let's <coughs> be looking there. So, as you can see, now from this angle, so we're in here, and get that nicely in behind it. Yeah, so, staying in that point, and just imagine the right forearm back, and then push, push it through, just keep it moving. Yeah? And what we want to do is we want to get the club just to brush the ground, just like we would do all the time, you know, for the legs before we really climb. That's it. Keep it going, keep it moving through. Just imagine now if we feel a forearm move towards the target this way and not as much around to the left, we'll be able to see that we're actually going to the right. Sometimes we're around to the left and catch it off the toe and it's flying off line. Which is more to the target, that's it. So we say, okay, well, how great do we need to be to get the golf ball to finish where we want it to finish? Okay, so more motion pressure forward, keep it there, back to about here, pull that through. So you noticed there how it was hands through. Yeah, it's almost chipped it in by the way, but we did see the club bounce first, yeah. So we want to feel everything through here. If I was to control, so you say nice and black and I control there. Yeah, yeah. But notice how everything's moving out to the left, the ball's going a little bit to the left here. Yeah. So we want to feel that half through. Um, yeah. Nice and slow, and again, that low point, finding the low point, so we're going to do and just get that feeling. Nice and slow, not real speedy. And then from that point there, if we can get the club to free it, and remember the hands are forward of the head, yeah? So we're not flicking, we're not sliding underneath, the hands are staying forward, and we're just pushing the club face through the golf ball there so straight away it goes up in the air it lands softly it runs out that ball is about two and a half feet beyond the hole yeah perfect you know and it's making sure that we can get that kind of consistency as we go through let's hit three more with that feeling pressure forward so forearm pushing to beautiful Right guys, so what you can see there, on the front, on the front here, I'm going to get a bit of zoom in actually, so you can see exactly what we can see. Now, on the front of the club there is a little gadget, that's called Sky Pro. And this is going to get us some really good data on what the shaft is doing. Uh, <clears throat> we've talked about wanting the club head to stay behind the hands, so the shaft leaning towards the target so let's get a few shots and let's have a look at the, the length of swing data and the shaft position as we go through hitting these little pictures beautiful look at that is it going to go in Ooh. Give there, surely. close to be fair i would have give you that look at this Chipping. Oh, one more. Come on. Lovely action. Nice and short. That one there's the only one which we didn't quite give ourselves exactly the same movement that we wanted. Right, so we have a little look at the data. I'm going to show you this data full on in the camera in a second. But when we're looking at it here, looking at the different shots that we've hit, we've got a shaft lean, swing number one. So, 
shaft plane of the dress is three degrees backwards, so hands are behind. We want that to be leaning forward, so we want that in there forward. Then as we go to the back swing position, the back swing is moved, the club is moved into the eight o'clock position. So if you imagine being stood on a clock face, six o'clock's being down here, seven, eight o'clock, this is where the shaft's moving to. And then as we go through into impact, the shaft then is two degrees forward, so it's leaning slightly forward impact. So it's leaning back at address, leaning forward impact. Okay, so at least we've got a forward leaning impact because of that slight downward angle attack. So we've the ball up really nicely. Then if we look at the next one, we say our shaft lean. So at address, very forward it says here, nine degrees. So we've gone from being two degrees back to nine degrees forward. We've gone again into almost, it says a nine o'clock position, it's probably a little bit shorter that as we look at it, maybe about the half eight, quarter to nine position. Coming down and through, we've got 12 degrees of shaffling forward, so we've got a nice crisp strike. And we see, you know, when we look at those, I'm going to zoom in on those balls in a minute. That's a great little grouping that we've got from getting the right movements out there. Then, if we look at the next one, so we've gone and we've pushed the hand a little bit further forward, so 15 degrees forward, and our, our shaft lean to start with. I'm sorry, 10 degrees forward. Now we've gone eight o'clock position again in the back swing. We've gone 15 degrees forward at impact. That's great. That little chip running through, and it's ran on a little bit nicely, almost put it into the hole, which is really good. Then we look here at the next one. We start at 11 degrees forward. We get in our back swing position. Uh, again, eight o'clock position, and we are 17 degrees forward coming into impact. So we're on down and crisp. So, you know, it's one thing where we can say, well, at times, I mean, it says very forward. And the reason it says very forward is because in the real world, when it comes to really getting good crisp control and spin, too much shaft lean will give us too little loft so we won't get the same amount of control and friction. But at this moment in time, that amount of shaft lean is crucial because we've had back and back leaning this way, which is what affects the consistency of the contact, whereas now we are forward and forward, so we're just getting used to being a movement which the club has been moved nicely with the arms, almost that underarm throwing action. We're finding the bottom of the swing in the same spot all the time, which is giving us the same outcome. You know, and when we have a little look at those images in a minute, we will see some really, really nice groupings. You know, from a position which would normally be a putter, and we've got the guesswork of where it's going to be, or where it's going to bobble, how it's going to roll how fast we've got to swing the putter to get to the, the ball rolling nicely on the green. We've now got a, a shot with a, a lofted club, which is pitching it on, landing nicely and releasing forward. And, and you know, we fancy our chances of getting up and down with most of those than you would do with maybe hitting the put too far or not hitting it far enough or having a bobble offline. So from those positions there, we are in a much, much, much better and healthier state and now he's no longer going to put it okay. right so we've changed club we've gone to uh, gap wedge um, so we've swapped over we've put uh, skypro on there so we'll see now the difference in the length of swing which is the key because we've got less loft now we don't need as much movement back so more sort of seven o'clock would be what we could look at as being the ideal if you like so let's have a look and see where we are in terms of our length of swing. We're looking at there, really nice, really nice as we go through and again. I didn't quite get the, the nice contact on that one that we would like. And the beautiful little rollout. So if we look there, we've changed the club. We've used two different clubs now, two different lofts. Look at that grouping, it's fantastic. We've got one there where the shaft was, you know, we didn't quite keep the movement going as we'd like to. And because of that, we've seen a difference in, in where the club has, has gone through and impact in the ball's result. 
But other than that, that little grouping from a, a shot that you would normally put yeah, I would, yeah. is is absolutely fantastic. We're starting off there, let's go to the start point. So starting off there again, 13 degrees forward on the shaft lean. Okay, again, so eight o'clock position, which is you know, so we know there that. If we can go no further than the 8 o'clock position, 11 degrees of shaft lean forward, nicely forward. So, we look at the next one. So we started at 10 degrees, we move it forward again to the 8 o'clock. A little bit shorter though, at 60, uh, 54 degrees rather than 60 yeah. degrees. So it's, it's talking about the position on the clock face, but it's also measuring how far yeah. the club yeah, yeah. is moving. So we would say, well, as long as it's not going too far and maybe into the mid 60s of degrees, then we're going to be fine. And then we're coming back through and through impact of 13 degrees of shaft lean. Then we're looking at 12 degrees of address, 53 degrees at the eight o'clock position. 14 degrees forward. So we're looking here at being able to measure where we start, the importance of the shaft being forward for Lloyd at the minute, going through impact to be able to produce that lovely locus pitch forward release and then a superb outcome. So as a basic principle for pitching, this is what we want to do. Now when we want the ball to travel a little further, which we're going to do now just before we finish, uh, we're just going to feel that length of movement a bit more. So we'll keep the same club on there, yeah. we're going to hit a couple of shots out there and we're just going to change, we'll go to maybe the, the, the flag just on the left hand side. So it's going to carry itself a little bit further through the air and then we're going to see from the different length of, of swing So there we see that one's because we've got less loft that one's reacted and it's ran on and through but we will see in a second the difference in how far we need to move that's beautiful really really nice it's just running on there towards the back flag uh, again 10 degrees forward difference in length of movement nine o'clock 88 degrees yeah. so we're moving the club another 30 degrees or so on and then we'll move it down nine degrees of shaft lean forward, so we're pitching it up nicely and releasing it. Now, it's you know, we've, we've hit a few shots of this, so we know roughly that nice control and speed and tempo. The practice and the skill is to be able to take that and judge the length of, of movement, control the speed so that we fly the ball further and we can adjust to different lengths and different targets. And that's the bit that you guys are going to see when Lloyd's practicing. So the bits that you're going to see snippets on Instagram and on uh, Captain Cameron's Golf Pollution YouTube channel, you're going to see those pieces being put in place more and more and more. Um, but we've now got a basic principle for everything that we need from how we want the full swing to move, how we want to approach our point of play from more consistency. And instead of having to get the putter out here, being able to, to use different lofts, but using the same motion as we go forward. So, brilliant. Awesome, awesome, awesome piece of information. This piece of kit is absolutely fantastic. It's about two well, so, you know, we look at the grand scheme of things for the information that you get. Uh, as a practice tool for you guys, you know, sometimes you look at it and think, you know what, I'm not chipping great, so I'm going to spend another 100 quid per wedge and buy some three wedges because it might make you feel better. Save yourself your money, get yourself a something like this, and you can get the information which will help you improve, and that's the key. Once you've improved, then if you want to treat yourself good. You know, there's loads of great wedges out there and stuff, but if you've got the information which shows you and gives you the results so you know how to control the distance, control the, the speed, the tempo, and then also, you know, the position that the club is in so you get the right outcome from where you were to where you need to be, then it's definitely Guys, thanks for watching again. As always, post your comments in the box below. We love to hear from you guys. We want to know everything that you guys think about the series so far. This is episode four. If you haven't seen one, two, and three, then make sure you check those out. Uh, make sure you also check out the Captain Caveman Challenges. We've done a few of those um, so far as well. There'll be loads more of those coming. Put your ideas in the comments box as well. Subscribe to both channels. Follow both of us on Instagram. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Awesome, Thanks, guys.